If a tsunami wave is coming to the land and you have two choices, choice number one is to be wiped out by it, choice number two is to go and surf on it. And you know that when you surf on it, you're going to be surfing a wave that is wiping people out. Which one would you choose? It's a very difficult choice to make, but that's the reality. So people who are saying that it's a threat, you're damn right it's a threat. Now you have a choice. Either you sit down and do nothing, or you go make friends with the enemy and allow the enemy to support you in becoming the future human being. Fahd Bizari, he's an alpha in the field of something very hot. It's AI and ChatGPT. How ChatGPT can help people in creating content. Marketing content is a type of... Welcome back, Alphas, to a new episode of the Alpha Talks podcast. Today, I have a very special guest with me in the studio, a very special Alpha. He's an Alpha in the field of something very hot, a very hot topic these days. It's AI and ChatGPT. And I'm sure you will enjoy this episode. And there are a lot of knowledge bombs will be in this episode. So stay tuned. So welcome, Fahd Bizari with me in the Alpha Talks today. Thank you for having it's me. It's a pleasure having you today. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, Fahd, let's say, to kick it off, somebody looked at the Spotify thumbnail or YouTube thumbnail mm -hmm. of the episode mm -hmm. and saw the title and thought it's a very interesting episode. What can you promise today or we promise today that they will gain if they gave us their time? I would like to be able to promise achieving their goals 10, 20 times faster than they could imagine, whilst also reducing the overwhelm that they feel in their life. Super answer. <laughs> Everything in life, we have the 24 hours. Every person has the same 24 hours. Yeah. So if we can do more in the same 24 hours, that's what makes us achieve our goals. Exactly. So let's start with who's Fahd? Can you tell us who's Fahd and what do you do? So Fahed is a very interesting person from the point of view that from a very young age, I've never had to work for anybody else. My, I had two jobs. Uh, one of them lasted for four days and the other lasted for four hours. Oh, it's getting the, <laughs> the part down. Yeah. <laughs> and I understood from those two experiences that uh, the corporate world is not for me. Working for other people is not for me. And uh, I had a mentor one day. I asked him about going into a business. I was 23 years old. And uh, he said to me, if I had somebody like you, you should never work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And he lent me the money for my first business. And the first business succeeded. Most people, it's the 10th business that succeeds. True, true. In my case, by the grace of God, it was the first business that succeeded. And that business was mostly automated. Mm -hmm. So from a very young age, I had a business that was about 90% automated. And that was at 27 years old, earning me high six uh, six figure income. So you understood the value of automation. I understood from, and I, when I, you know, I started out going out into the world and telling people and they, they just didn't understand what I was talking about. That allowed me to then get into consulting. Mm -hmm. So I started ad offering advice to people and getting paid as a consultant. And then one day I was in a meeting with a potential client and, and they said to me, they said, Fahid, you know, if you're such a hotshot consultant, why are you wasting your time consulting? Why aren't you doing more things for yourself? Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? You're right. So I went back to all of my consulting clients. And I said, guys, I'm done with I'm consulting. Done. <laughs> I said, you have, you have two choices. <laughs> Either you bring me in as a shareholder, in which case I'm not going to charge you anymore. Mm -hmm. And I'll continue to advise you for free. Because I'm that guy that even in the shower, I'm thinking about my client's business. Mm -hmm. Like I, for me, a problem, and this is if you go to LinkedIn, you'll see that my nickname is the Chaos Wrangler. Yeah. Like I can't mm -hmm. handle chaos. I need the chaos mm -hmm. to be solved, right? And, um, and then eventually I just continued to set up my own businesses. Mm -hmm. And so I just went from there. And, you know, most people, it's the first, <laughs> for most people, the first nine fail and the 10th succeed. Yeah, yeah. Mine was the first Other one way. succeeded <laughs> and the next nine failed. That's entrepreneurship, actually. Yeah. You're a workaholic, but I am increasingly becoming less of a, a workaholic. Mm -hmm. I am traditionally a workaholic, but what I've been experiencing with AI and ChatGPT recently is that the work is so intense now and in such a short period of time, I get so much work done. I think to myself, why do I need to work anymore? I'm done for the day. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I, mm -hmm. th that's it. In the old days, this same work that just took me three hours would have taken me three weeks. True. Talas, I'm mm -hmm. done. True. 
Let me go and watch a film. Let me go and play golf. Let me go and dance. Let me go and do something else. And so I am a workaholic by nature, mm -hmm. but increasingly I'm feeling there's no need to be. Since we touched base on ChatGPT, everybody knows now it's not something that we are announcing that it's gaining a lot of popularity. Mm -hmm. For the people who are still don't know exactly what ChatGPT is, can you give them a brief what's ChatGPT and how does it work? All right, let me, let me, okay, let me uh, edit something that you just mm -hmm. said, right? You said there's lots of people using it and there's lots of people not using it. Mm -hmm. I would dare to say that the vast majority of people who are using it are not actually using it, mm -hmm. right? So earlier on, we were talking about that exactly. Lamborghini, mm -hmm. right? So a person goes, yeah, I have a Lamborghini, but the person doesn't know how to drive. All they do is sit on top. They let the, mm -hmm. in fact, you know, I once knew a guy, a very wealthy Libyan chap mm -hmm. who had a Rolls Royce Phantom that used to be owned by the Shah of Iran. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a collectible. And th th the only thing it was used for pictures. No, the children are using it as like a climbing frame. Shit. The children are climbing on top and inside and so Shit. on. And they, you know, that's it. That's the use of this ultra, you know, prestigious car was mm -hmm. that. So many people think they are using chat GPT, but they're not really using chat GPT because chat GPT, there's no user manual mm -hmm. and you can just go to the website and start using it. So as long as you can make it do something, you think that's chat GPT. I'm using chat. No, you're not using chat GPT. You're literally scratching the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And until you actually get down to the iceberg, you still don't know what chat GPT is. If I want to let the people know what is chat GPT in a nutshell, how can you describe it? All right, so first thing, ChatGPT, from a knowledge point of view, mm -hmm. has within it, let's just call it for simplicity's sake, humanity's knowledge. Okay. All right, so you have your education, I have my education. What makes me special is my education, my experience, my exposure to the world. True. What makes you special is the same thing, but for you. So imagine somebody had my education and your education. Mm -hmm. Combined. Combined. My exposure and your exposure combined my everything and your everything combined okay how about that has the whole of dubai the whole of the uae the whole of the middle east the whole of the world all of humanity's knowledge in one place not just that but the ability to synthesize it mix it and so on not just that but to understand you and your circumstance and to put humanity's knowledge at your service mm -hmm. it's basically a hyper powered assistant mm -hmm. that helps you with any intellectual challenge that is in front of you. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So just imagine most of the time when you have an intellectual challenge, you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. For the first time in our lives, we're no longer by ourselves. We have a partner, and that partner is infinitely smarter than us. Can you give the audience an example? An example. Mm -hmm. The turning point for me mm -hmm. in my relationship with ChatGPT was in the creation of a business plan. Ooh. Okay. Now, 99% of business plans are made because somebody demands it. Yes. The bank is demanding it. The investor is demanding Ooh. it. The accelerator is demanding it. Mm -hmm. The hub is... Somebody somewhere is demanding you make a business plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So most of the time, a business plan is just a way of like making it look like you've had a good think about the business, mm -hmm. but you haven't really, you just want to make that guy happy. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to December 22. I've been using ChatGPT every single day and I'm working on a nonprofit project. Mm -hmm. And to raise funds from the donors, because whenever I do charity projects, my, in, my uh, outlook is I'm bringing the brains and the experience, you bring the money. Cool. Okay. So, I start working with ChatGPT and I went for a weekend uh, up to Manchester and I told myself in the mornings I'm going to work on this project and I forgot the charger of my laptop in London. So what mm -hmm. am I going to do? So what happened? I said, okay, I still need to work because this is the time I fix for my work. So I opened up ChatGPT and I said, listen, you and I are going to have a long conversation. I'm going to ask you questions. You're going to give me answers and you are going to ask me questions. And I'm going to give you answers. But you literally did this. Yeah, I can show you the conversation, Ooh. right? So then at the end of mm -hmm. this, we're going to combine all of our answers together to create a business plan. So I did six hours Sunday, Saturday, six hours on Sunday. 
And then when I go back down to London, I open my laptop and I combined everything. And then I put it back into ChatGPT to make it nicely formatted. That took about three, three hour sessions. Mm -hmm. So six plus six plus three plus three plus three, that's 12, 21 hours. That business plan, I've done many business plans. Mm -hmm. That business plan is the single best business plan I have made and seen in my entire life. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I had tried to make that business plan by myself, it would have taken at least four weeks. Cool. And the conclusion of that business plan was that I decided not to go forward with the project. You know, it's very impressive because even myself, I never thought of a chat, a chat GPT that can create me a business plan. It can, it, like anything that we are doing as professionals, mm -hmm. Chat GPT can not only do it, but it can do it better than us. You just have to know how to steer it, how to direct it, how to guide it, what information to bring to the front, what information to put to the back, and able to make it replicate us as, 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 as you know, to, to help us take on the tasks that we're doing on a daily basis. This is exactly what you said about the Lamborghinis. It's like, it's not only that you have the Lamborghini, but know how to use it. Exactly. So the idea is how to use Chat GPT. Exactly. We will get into this. All right. But if we, if we look at AI in general mm -hmm. and we see the advancement happening in it, what do you think from your perspective is the most, I would say, significant advancement coming, you see it in the horizon? Oh, wow. That's a deep mm -hmm. question. That's a very deep question. Well, if, if you're asking me in terms of like improvements and, and, yes. and leaps forward, hold mm -hmm. on, that's one thing. But what I like to focus on, the area that I like to focus on is what I call cognitive co-pilot, okay. okay? Which is this idea that you open your mind to the mind of chat GPT or the mind of AI, mm -hmm. and you bring it in, and instead of thinking about things by yourself, you think about it with the help of AI, okay? Mm -hmm. This is, as far as I'm concerned, the most powerful impact of AI, and it's already available now. The Elon Musk thing or not? This is where, exactly, this is where it is heading, mm -hmm. right? But the version 0.1 is actually ChatGPT. That's version 0.1. Mm -hmm. Version 3, version 4, version 5 is the kind of Elon Musk, that yeah, kind of connectivity with your mind and so on. Okay? Mm -hmm. But now here's the thing. The AI companies, the companies that are pushing the AI are also the biggest advertisers. So they don't actually want us to reach that. What they want us to do is to become dependent upon them Mm -hmm. so that we still see the adverts. True. Mm -hmm. That's what I see more and more coming up. What I see more and more is Google, Microsoft, and these other big players, Amazon, pushing forward with personal AI systems mm -hmm. that allow them to throw in the advertising. Mm -hmm. You the see what Google. I mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and then the private systems will also come up that are free from advertising, but you have to pay. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we're at right now with ChatGPT. And that's what, but, People don't see it, you know? So this is for me, this is the biggest thing. And I, it's not that it's coming up in the future. It's already here mm -hmm. for the early adopters and the innovators that are willing to accept a few frustrations here yeah, and there. Yeah, true. Okay, what is, if you talk, ask Fahd, what is your, the biggest misconception that you see around AI that you want to dispel? The biggest misconception. Or a myth. I would say, I mean, you know, again, I always come back to ChatGPT. ChatGPT, mm -hmm. and there's another platform called Perplexity. For I will interrupt you here because mm -hmm. this is an important thing I would like the audience to know. From my knowledge, mm -hmm. ChatGPT is good with text and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Perplexity, uh, what's it called again? Perplexity. Uh, this one is good for numbers. Am I no, correct no, or not? No, 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 no. So ChatGPT, mm -hmm. the data inside ChatGPT goes up to 2021 mm -hmm. and now... 2022. Okay. okay I, I posted about this on LinkedIn because I only saw the update a few mm -hmm. days ago. So I posted it on my LinkedIn. However, the way that ChatGPT and GPT technology mm -hmm. produces content is actually a type of guessing. It just guesses what's next. Okay, let's mm -hmm. do a demo. I did yeah. the demo with Ahmed when I went oh, on his okay. podcast. I'm going to mm -hmm. do it with you as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I came to you and I said, happy birthday. Ah, to you, so you continue. Right? So what happens is I said something, it triggered you, mm. and you continued. So if you think about it, most of the way that we operate as human beings is the same thing. Like mm. you come and you face, let's say as a coach, and now you've got one of your clients, and he, you ask him, okay, tell me about your situation, da-da-da-da-da, 
And in your mind, you'll go, ding, I've done this 10 different mm, times. I know. What I know. Is. I've seen this pattern before. I've seen half of this pattern, half of that pattern. I've seen it all before. So now I know how to guide and coach my client. Mm -hmm. That's actually how we operate as human beings, right? But it's guessing. It's an educated guess, but it's still a guess. Mm -hmm. Perplexity doesn't really guess. Okay. What perplexity does is just imagine you have a team of 10 people and I say to you, uh, safe, what's the top five podcasts in the UAE? Mm -hmm. So what will happen? And you've got 10 employees. Employee number one will go to Google and type in uh, top five yeah. podcasts in Dubai. Employee number two, top podcast UAE. And all five guys or 10 guys, they go, they get the search results, they look in the results, they all take notes and they all come back, they bring all of their notes and they put all the notes together and they give you the final answer. Mm -hmm. Perplexity does exactly that simultaneously. Oh. So if mm -hmm. you go there, it will go to the search engines and it will do all of that and bring you back a clean answer. So if for that chat GPT, I can put a mathematical equation and it can answers me back no no stay away i'm telling you these are yeah. a few things to win win gpt stay away from numbers listen to this so <laughs> stay away from numbers stay fortune. away from numbers mm -hmm. and if it gives you any numbers for example some people will say to it yeah i want you to give me a day-to-day -day plan for xyz and mm -hmm. it will say day one do this day two and it looks really good stay away stay from away it as well. stay away from it let it give you ideas but stay away from it anything mm -hmm. with numbers the second thing to be suspicious anything with capital letters so if it says to you, for example, you know, Saif al Hakim, mm -hmm. right? Be careful. Be suspicious. Mm -hmm. Because it looks like it knows what it's talking about, but there's a high chance it's just making things up. Ah, oh, it's not correct. It's not correct. Okay. The third thing is references. In recent times, the references have gotten better mm -hmm. and people have felt comfortable taking references. But if you understand that it's only guessing, uh, stay away from references because it's guessing the reference. It's not like Google where it's going yeah, into exactly. a, a database, mm -hmm. pulling the information it's out and inserting mm -hmm. it. It's just guessing, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the third thing to stay away from is references. These are three things stay away from using ChatGPT. Yeah. Let's go back to the misconception and myth. What right. Be? So the misconception is that ChatGPT and AI cannot replicate me. And it absolutely, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say, it absolutely yeah. fucking mm. can. Impo you know, just can or can? Can. can. Just today, mm. I was reading a post from somebody who is an AI, you know, they, they under their thing says AI specialist mm, and whatever. Expert. Yeah. And, and, and this person said, I'm not going to say he or she because I don't want to, mm. you know, this person said, you know, a lot of people are using AI and chat GPT now, and you can see that it's very generic. Mm -hmm. You can you can tell when when people are using chat GPT at mm -hmm. a basic level. And so then she said, and this is why AI will never replace humans, mm -hmm. because humans bring a certain creativity, a certain uniqueness, Liveliness. blah, blah. That, and I said, okay, so what? Just teach that to the AI. <laughs> Your problem is solved. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right? So anything that we can do, in fact, yesterday I saw a video, you know, you know, uh, so last month, one of the jobs that we thought could not be replicated is a beautician. Mm -hmm. Like it's such a, a you know, physical, delicate, delicate yeah. whatever. So about two months ago, three months ago, maybe, they released a robot that does eyelash extensions. No way. So the woman just lies down and this robot comes up. On the eye. And it comes the on precision. the eye, the most precision, yeah. right? And from what I remember, it costs $50,000 which means that easily it's going to get a return on investment in less than one year. Mm -hmm. And all you need now, like in the supermarkets, in the supermarkets, you have one person managing five, six, seven, eight automated True. checkouts. Exactly. So in the end, what you'll have is <clears throat> one technician managing the eyelash extensions of six, seven mm -hmm. machines, right? Mm. So yesterday or today, actually, I saw a video of a robot putting a thread through the eye of a needle it came and it picked up the thread like this and the needle is there and it put it through the eye of the needle right so all of these things that we are saying oh it can't replicate it right can't we're lying to ourselves so it will it will it's just a matter of time and cost mm -hmm. right so for example apple about two months ago one two months ago they released their glasses yeah. and it's like three thousand mm -hmm. dollars something silly like mm -hmm. that right so everybody's thinking oh the metaverse is far away three thousand dollars who's going to pay three 
What they didn't realize is that Apple is releasing this $3,000. It's not for the general public. This $3,000 is for the developers. Now, the developers are going to go and develop everything. By the time they develop, the price, mainstream. the price will go from $3,000 down to $1,800. Mm-hmm. And then they'll make a ghetto version for $1,100 or whatever. Yeah. So it's just a matter of time or cost. And tr- truth be told, step by step, everything that we can do, AI with robotics will be able to replicate. This is a very important topic. Mm. So you do believe that AI will replace jobs, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So what's your advice for the people listening to us? Is it, a th- from your standpoint, is it a threat or it's a way for people to leverage this AI to advance? I'm going to say something to say, I'm going to say something to you, Safe, and I might start cr- I was going to say I might start crying when I say it. If a tsunami wave is coming to the land and you have two choices, choice number one is to be wiped out by it. Choice number two is to go and surf on it. And you know that when you surf on it, you're going to be surfing a wave that is wiping people out. Which one would you choose? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult choice to make. But that's the reality. So people who are saying that it's a threat, you're damn right it's a threat. Now you have a choice. Either you sit down and do nothing, or you go make friends with the enemy and allow the enemy to support you in becoming the future human being. And what I teach people is that when you are working with AI, if you know, if you can spend the time and the money to unlock AI, AI will help you reach your potential as a human being. Because all of us have dreams, right? Mm -hmm. We all have dreams of ownership. We have dreams of adventure. We have dreams of partnership. We have all of these dreams. And a lot of us, we're getting older and older without our dreams actually being realized. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to let go of our dreams one by one by one by one. AI coming into our life is allowing us to 10x our ability to get things done. So stop Asking the question is, uh, yes, it's a threat. Now get past that mm-hmm. and ask how can you use it so that the threat is not aimed at you. It's aimed at the people who are sticking their heads in the ground. And it's very, it's a sad thing. True. And that's why I told you I might cry when I answer is because it does make me sad. Mm-hmm. But in the end, what do you do? Do you I know love this I mean? example, actually. True. Okay. If we look at open AI in general, mm. there is, we can see the progress that is mm. happening. Maybe people are not aware of it. Mm-hmm. They released several versions of GPT. Can you tell us how the ev- evolution happened? It started like this, and then they added the, the new version to see how things are progressing. So, you know, you got GPT, all right? So I think the first one might have been 2019. Mm-hmm. I think GPT-1 is 2019. Yeah. And so it just started off very simple. Now, I did that thing with you, which is happy birthday, Mm -hmm. and you said to you, right? That's the essence of it. And what they've been doing is evolving that essence to become more and more competent, giving it more knowledge and more ability to understand context. So if I open GPT for you now and I said happy birthday, it would say something like um, happy birthday to you too, because it thinks you're wishing it happy birthday. So it will say, okay, happy birthday to you too. But if you put the word song before it, now it knows. And it will say, happy birthday to you, happy birthday Ah, to you, uh right? Just adding the word song, it understood that, no, this is not a conversation, this is the song. So that's how they've been evolving GPT. Mm -hmm. The magic that took the world by storm in 2022, which triggered this AI madness Mm -hmm. that we're now experiencing, is adding the chat element to chat, to GPT and Mm -hmm. making it chat GPT. Because now it became an interaction between you and this hyper intelligent seeming bot Mm -hmm. right and that's what's allowed and they didn't actually think they it didn't cross their minds that this success would happen uh in general they Um, themselves no they put it out there as an experiment they put it out there just for testing and next thing they know 100 million exactly Mm -hmm. 100 million users in something like one week Mm -hmm. and now just literally 30 minutes ago now they've announced that the chat chat gpt will speak so it'll be voice activated so you will speak voice it will speak back to you Mm -hmm. in voice and also uh, picture recognition, which they talked about last month, but now or two months ago, but now it's actually coming to the market. 
Picture so, recognition. Picture recognition. So I can, I, I can, let's say, for example, I could put something like this mug and I'll say something like, help me to understand what's in this mug. And it will look at it and it will say, yeah, this is a tiger, this is a leopard, this mm-hmm. is whatever. You know what I mean? This is a lion and so on. So, you know, from a use case point of view, it's magical for people who can't see. Like ah, true. blind mm-hmm. people, it's amazing. True. You can just be wearing glasses yeah. and tap it and we'll say, yeah, you're in a room with three people, two men, one woman, they're talking with each other. This is it. You're in a room. There's a window in front of you. There's a window on your left and so on. Wow. So wow. it's, it's, you know, the, the, the breakthrough of AI is GPT mm-hmm. because for the last 50, 60 years, the people in AI have been trying to figure out how do we organize humanity's knowledge in such a way that it can work in any situation and give us good content back. Otherwise, you know, Google Maps has been using AI, all of these, type of, they've all been using AI, true. right? Mm-hmm. But this is the first time now with natural language, you can speak to it and it will find answers and it will come back to you with natural language. Mm-hmm. So this is the big breakthrough and doing it through the chat format is the biggest breakthrough. Okay, a quick thing for the audience. Mm. When you go to chat GPT, there are two versions. One mm-hmm. is the free one and one is the paid one. Mm-hmm. What is the difference between them and what can it give us or give the audience more? Right, so you can get 3.5. Mm-hmm. So it's 3.5 and 4. four. You can get 3.5 to do a lot of the things that 4 can do, but it's just a lot more hard work. It's a lot more hard work. You mean in commanding the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you have to command it. You have to have like, to, to achieve a certain goal, you have to have a conversation that lasts, let's say, 10 interactions, uh, and then you get your goal. Mm-hmm. With GPT-4, you can get that goal within about two or three interactions, right? So you can get it much faster. Then you also have um, other features. So the features I just talked about mm-hmm. now, those features will only be coming four. to four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, anybody that's using it and everybody should be using it, generally speaking, it will be the best $20 you spend in your entire life. Like, mm-hmm. don't hold back on this. Don't hold back on this. Listen to this. <laughs> $20? $20 a month. It's literally, you get that $20 back, the ROI on that $20. If you are using it the way it should be used and you are serious about it, you'll get the ROI back in one minute. Mm-hmm. One minute. Interesting. Let's go to a, a real example okay. of a business that is running and using chatbots for uh, customer support. Mm-hmm. So can you tell them or tell us what is the difference between using, uh, between using a regular, like, rule-based chatbot and a chatbot that's powered by AI or ChatGPT. Wow. Okay. So I can tell you the ones that are based on rules, everybody absolutely hates them. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is that you go in there and you're like, okay, are you open tonight? And the answer comes back, something like, we're open Monday to Friday, nine to five. And you just get angry. And Mm -hmm. now all of us have learned that if you type in the word human, it will bypass this and get to the human. So it's mm-hmm. actually a complete waste of time. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's a fr- it frustrates the customers 100%. and pushes people away. And in the end, it's pointless. Mm-hmm. Using GPT powered bots, on the other hand, is a different ball game altogether. Because now it actually, first of all, you speak to it in natural language, it speaks back to you in natural language. And it depends on how it has been programmed. So you can program it to be friendly, to be direct, to be sarcastic. And you can direct it, listen, try, you know, don't tap into your GPT knowledge. Mm-hmm. The GPT knowledge is just to help you converse, but stay focused on our knowledge. Okay. And you share all of that knowledge with it so that it can give contextual answers. So it's it's different the heavens and the earth. Mm-hmm. But if any of your audience are looking at doing this, they need to make sure that they are regularly checking the conversations. Mm-hmm. We, we just talked about it before. We talk, before exactly. Yeah. We talked about yeah. it just before. Yeah. Because what can happen is, you know, I told you about this one group where the people are asking it about questions about Dubai and the training data is based on all of the Emirates and it's answering stuff based on Dubai and Ajman and Fujairah mm-hmm. and the information is wrong. So you need to regularly check the exactly, conversations. Exactly, you need to regularly and you need to always, always, always give people an easy way to get to a human. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of analytics. Actually, I wrote an entire ebook on this topic mm-hmm. with all the analytics that you should be tracking when you have a chatbot, mm-hmm. you know, to make sure that it's performing the way that it should mm-hmm. perform. Very interesting. Content creation. Mm. And I believe majority of the people are using chat GPT for content creation, mm-hmm. which is extremely important in digital marketing. Mm-hmm. Can you tell in a nutshell how chat GPT can help people in creating content? 
not the standard way. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, Because yeah, as you yeah, said, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. write me X, yeah. Y, Z. No, yeah, yeah, not yeah, in yeah, a standard yeah, yeah. way. All right. Okay. Stay focused with me. Yeah. All right. Stay focused with me. Yeah. Marketing content is a type of communication. Okay. It's an external type of communication. Mm -hmm. What comes before the external communication is internal communication. Mm -hmm. Okay, the external communication we call that interpersonal, and the internal communication we call it intrapersonal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a good content writer, okay, whether he's writing adverts, mm -hmm. whether he's writing copy for a sales page, mm -hmm. whatever, he will be thinking about things deeply internally first. Cool. And what you see on the paper is the result of everything that happened inside. And the more exposure he has had, let's just take sales copy. The more exposure he has had or she has had to the sales copy of professional sales copywriters, the more successful his copy will be. Cool. So instead of asking ChatGPT to write the sales copy, step number one is to train it on all the variables that would be going on in your mind mm -hmm. if you were to be writing it by yourself. Okay. Once you have delivered that training into its short-term memory, including examples, now ask it. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is the marriage between the tip of the iceberg, which is the content that actually gets on the screen, and the iceberg itself, which is everything that happens below. Just like we have to think, get ChatGPT to think, to think. and which to think means, with it. means that you're feeding ChatGPT, just for the regular audience to understand, you're feeding ChatGPT with Correct. sales copies, for example, Correct. before you ask ChatGPT to give you Correct. a sales copy. And now here's the magic. That, if that wasn't magical enough, here's It's the magic, new. is that you can pull that training data from ChatGPT. So just imagine mm -hmm. you diving into the ocean and you pull out what it needs and then you give it back to it, And then it does all the magic. And that's really where the, all the magic lies. It's not a one interaction. You pull it out, give it back, and then boom. You know, very interesting because you're speaking a lot of, saying a lot of good things about ChatGPT and how, how it works. Yeah. Why do you think people are not putting the time and effort to learn ChatGPT rather than just going, yeah. <laughs> you understand? Like I'll tell you, there's, so it, the, there's something called anchoring bias. Mm -hmm. okay? So whenever we face a new circumstance, whatever that circumstance is, we try to understand it in light of our past experiences. So there are three, it's called anchoring bias. This is why if you go to a mall, you know Pierre Cardin, that mm -hmm. shop, do you notice they're always on sale? Mm -hmm. That's the, yeah. yeah, it's like okay. other brands as well. Yeah. Other brands mm -hmm. as well, why? And they go, this thing is from a thousand dirhams down mm -hmm. to 250 always. dirhams. Always, mm -hmm. right? Who are they targeting, by the way? They're not targeting us. Mm -hmm. They're targeting tourists. Mm -hmm. The tourists who come here for two weeks think they, yeah, exactly. they think they caught the sale. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? So the anchor is 1,000 dirhams and the reality is 250 dirhams. So there are three anchors. There are three anchors. The first anchor is in what we just talked about, chatbots, mm -hmm. is that people are treating it like it's just an old school chatbot, okay? Rule-based chatbot. The second thing is they're treating it like it's software. Mm -hmm. So software, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, whatever. These are software where we've just come to know file, open, press mm -hmm. this button. So their, their vision of it is very limited. Mm -hmm. And then the third anchor, I've forgotten now what the third anchor is. Hold on, give me a second. Wait, 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 wait. And the third anchor, we've got software, we've got chatbots. Oh my God, I just delivered a three-part yeah. masterclass on this. I need to shoot myself. You shoot me, please. It's fine, it's All fine. All right? But that's what it mm. is, is that we're, oh, and the Programmed. third one, no, no, the third one is search engine. Ah, oh, it's, the third one is, believe, yeah, the third we're one treating is it as being a, a Google, a, another, Google. A, another Google, but that's easier, mm -hmm. a more user-friendly, but it's not. It is a brand new technology that none of us have ever worked with before. Just because it looks like something, we, it doesn't mean that it is. Mm -hmm. And what happens is they can access it and they say, write me an email. It writes them an email. And it gets, what it does is it gets you over the creator's, you know, this writer's block. Yeah, yeah. There's a creative block. In any form of creative work, there's a block at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So if a tool gets you over that block and does 10% of the work for you, you're happy. You're Ooh, like, yeah, this is I'm it. Done. Ah, I'm done. This mm -hmm. is amazing. I'm like, okay, I get it. And I'll do the remaining 90% mm -hmm. of the work. But in actual fact, if you're from the elite, the alphas who understand how this mm -hmm. works, right? It's not about 10%. We're talking 2,000%. Mm -hmm. 
True. That's what we need. And that's what we need. Yeah. And people, they don't realize it. This is why I just delivered a masterclass called Rethink Chat GPT. Mm -hmm. So if any of your viewers want to go and check it mm -hmm. out, rethinkchatgpt.co. I gave it last week for free. Mm -hmm. Today, we're actually putting a price tag on it. This how frequent do you, uh, you do it for the people to know? Rethink Chat GPT is being mm. recorded now. Okay. So what I did last week, I did I gave it for free to everybody and I recorded it as live sessions. Mm -hmm. The feedback was tremendous. Everybody highly recommend that people look at it. <laughs> really highly recommend. Thank you, sir. So everybody was saying, Oh my god, you have changed the way that we look. And and I want you to understand the name. By rethinking what Chat GPT is, you will also learn to rethink as a whole. Because mm -hmm. now you're going to bring ChatGPT into your mind, right? And that's where the magic takes place. The magic doesn't take place in writing. Mm -hmm. The magic takes place in thinking. Cool. All right. So that's why the number one reason, and I explain all of everything I just told you, I explain all of that in detail in the first class. Mm -hmm. It's a, In total, it's four and a half hours. Okay. In the first class, which is one and a half hours, I go into this in detail. And all these four and a half hours are recorded, yeah, right? Yeah. Guys, you have four and a half hours. It's five hours. I just remembered. Five, five hours. hours. You need to look at it. You need to take AI or ChatGPT really serious. You need to develop your skills in it. But let's move a little bit to a little bit humorous. Okay. <laughs> have you ever placed a command on ChatGPT and it gives you a humorous response? You know what? It makes me laugh all the time. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the things that make me laugh all the time. It's not the humorous response. I'll say something like, listen, ChatGP, I say, listen, I have a problem and this is the details. Can you help me out? And it will say something like, certainly. Uh, and I'm like, my uh, God, you know what? I wish all of my employees, I'll be like, yo, Ahmed, like can the... you do this for me? And he will say, certainly. certainly. And I'm like, oh my God, I wish everybody was like mm. this. Do you know what I mean? And every time that happens, I smile. Oh, you smile. I smile. Uh, every time that happens, I smile. Entrepreneurs and startups, mm. they always have a problem in brainstorming. Mm -hmm. And of course, this, they can use ChatGPT for brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? 100%. 100%. 100%. There's, yeah. So there are, there are eight transformational applications that I teach. If you mm -hmm. learn these eight, it will revolutionize your world. And two of them, well, one of them is um, brainstorming, right? I call it mm -hmm. ideation. Mm -hmm. ideation. Because what you do is you start off with a problem. I mean, if you had a whole team, when people do brainstorming as a team, why do they do it as a team, the traditional model? is because one of my ideas might trigger an idea with you. And now these two ideas will trigger an idea cool. with the third. But it's such a pain to bring everybody together and it's such a pain to go through that experience and so on. With ChatGPT, that's exactly what you can do, but you can do it back to back within 20 minutes. You can go in there and say, what if Elon Musk was involved in this meeting? Mm -hmm. How would that influence? What new ideas could come up and so on? You could say, okay, but we're looking at cutting costs. These ideas are too expensive. Let's, you know what I mean? So you can keep on throwing in these ideas and you can even say, what are 10, what are 10 seeds I could plant into this ideation session that would turn it into different directions? And it would mm -hmm. say something like cost, people, in it, like, you know, um, uh, the, what do you call it? The, 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 uh, the environment mm -hmm. and so on. And you can keep on looping through all of this, getting more ideas in 10, 15, 20 minutes by yourself than you could get bringing together an entire group of people wasting their afternoon. It's super interesting, actually. And you teach all this in your- Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is in the ChatGPT Accelerator. Mm -hmm. I have a separate program, which mm -hmm. is the ChatGPT Accelerator. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me your day, mm -hmm. right? Percentage of your day that you're using ChatGPT and in what areas? I, because I heard, like, I heard a lot of stories or I read a lot of stories that you're using even with family. With, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can absolutely. you tell the audience, like, percentage <laughs> and in what areas? I use it all the time with absolutely everything. It's as simple as that. All the time with everything. Put an example that off the topic, not content creation, not business plan, n like all, all right. the things that we're talking about. No, you can use it even in this. I'm, I'm trying to think of, a, okay, so, you know, and this is early on in my use, mm -hmm. right? Early on in my use, I came in, I was invited by my sister for dinner and sat down and everybody was laughing at my nephew. And I said, why is everybody, they said he's, he's, he's got a phobia of injections and he has to have an injection tomorrow. So my brother-in-law, he said to me, Fahad, you deal with him. So I sat with him afterwards and I opened up the laptop 
and I started chatting with ChatGPT and I said, hey, listen, first of all, my, you know, first of all, my nephew has uh, a, a, a phobia of injection. Is this really a thing or is he just making it up? Mm -hmm. And he said, no, this is a thing and it's called blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, who are the specialists that we need to speak to in order to have it addressed? And it said, okay, a psychotherapist, a hypnotherapist, and gave me about five, mm -hmm. six people. So I said, okay, I want you to act as a hypnotherapist and help us solve it. And it said, no, 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 I can't because it's trained not to do that. I said, mm -hmm. okay. I said, don't worry. We're going to see the hypnotherapist tomorrow morning. Can you just let me know what to expect? Ooh, you bypassed it. <laughs> bypassed uh, it, all right? So then we got different solutions. We got one solution, what one of the therapists, what they'll do is they'll try to change your relationship with the syringe. Mm -hmm. So they'll let you hold the syringe mm -hmm. and just get comfortable with it. Another therapist gave uh, affirmations mm -hmm. that this syringe is for my benefit, da, 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 da. Then another therapist approaches it intellectually mm -hmm. and so on and so on. And we did all of these together that evening. We went to the pharmacy, we bought the syringe, oh, we came back, we wrote down the affirmations that he enjoyed most. We asked, you know, what are the other reasons that people have this phobia? phobia. And it said, like, sometimes they feel that they will lose too much blood. Now, we think that's the stupidest mm -hmm, thing on earth, true. but for somebody who's suffering from it, and it turns out that he did. So he thought that he would lose too much blood. So we asked, okay, how much blood in the body? How much blood do you need to lose? And how much blood will the syringe take? And da 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 da, da. And we did all of this. Next day he went, he took his, uh, he went and had the injection, and that's it, his phobia is finished now. And I've- so I, even in this, like outside of business, outside of content creation, entrepreneurship, and so on, even on a family perspective, you can use judge. I've used it, you know, I missed, I, like, I, I, I've I, never been to a group yoga session before. Mm. And the first time, I've always had private training. Like mm. everything I've always done, I've always done it with private mm. trainers. And this one, I wanted to go into a group and I missed it. And I couldn't understand why did I miss it. So I went and had that chat with ChatGPT. And it basically, after the end of the long conversation, told me that I had a fear of judgment. Mm -hmm. Now, ask any of my friends, anybody who knows me, does Fahid have a fear of judgment? They'll all say, hell no. But it turns out that I did actually have a hidden fear of judgment because you go to a yoga session. Mm -hmm. Everybody's looking. Yeah. Everybody's looking. Everybody knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the instructor. They all know each other. They're wearing the clothes. They know the moves. And you come in as this complete newbie mm -hmm. and you're making a fool of yourself mm -hmm. wearing the wrong clothes and whatever. And for that reason, I didn't go. And then in the conversation, I said, okay, so how do we overcome this? And the advice I got was that, number one, you have to understand that all of those people, they also started in the same way. Mm -hmm. And a day will come that you will be, like that. You'll be like that. Somebody else will come yeah. in and they'll be thinking the same thing about you. Yeah. It's a normal rite of passage mm -hmm. in every field in life. Mm -hmm. Number two, just because they are more advanced than you in uh, yoga, you have to also remember that you are more advanced than them in many other things. True. And if they were to come into your world, they were the ones that would feel foolish. So chat GPT worked on your mindset. That's it. So then after that, the next, the next session was like two days later. I got to that session. I went to all of the sessions and that fear of judgment concept is wow. over and done with. Wow. Right. I love that. I, I do all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I have a lot of philosophical conversations. I have conversations about like my circumstances, about the way I'm feeling. You know, there's a concept called metacognition, mm -hmm. which is thinking about thinking. Mm -hmm. And so you, you can actually have these conversations with it. It's not a people think that it's all about content generation. Stop. Think about it as a thinking partner more than anything else. And that is the number one E. To, un to start unlocking the potential of ChatGPT. Mm, I love that. That's, a lot of people have concerns that AI in general will become too intelligent mm -hmm. that somehow we can't control. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in that? And what kind of risks do you see if, if this really happened? I mean, uh, so this is a governmental problem, mm -hmm. right? And the governments are now switching on to that and they are taking steps onto that. And there's not actually much that we can do about it, to be frank. Mm -hmm. There really is not much that we can do. You can try and start a mini micro revolution yeah. and it's just, it's pointless now because the money, all money now is going into yeah. AI, right? So just as a human, there are some people that are, for example, 
uh, very focused on AI ethics, and they're doing their best to ensure that the training data is 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 not biased mm -hmm. and so on. And you know, power to them, and that's their line of work. That's what God's chosen for them. Mm -hmm. I support them, and so on. But for us, really, unless you're really passionate about it, there's nothing you can do. What you can do is start to understand the concepts yourself and master it yourself so that you are not the one being squashed mm -hmm, go back to that surfing mm -hmm, true. you know back to that true. surfing thing you know let's give a hypothetical scenario that chat gpt had the access to all the human knowledge mm -hmm. okay what kind of problem do you want it to solve as fahd and why the number one problem that it has to solve is the problem that it's going to create which is the problem of poverty that is the problem. Mm -hmm. The number one problem it has to solve is the problem that it's going to create, right? Because it's, if it's going to start taking jobs, what's going to happen in the marketplace, if you look at it from an economics point of view, the more people who have, the more people who are unemployed from a supply and demand, the supply of labor will go up, mm -hmm. which means those people that think that they can just go and get a job in doing something manual, in actual fact, you're going to be competing with hundreds and thousands and millions of other people sure. for that manual work, mm -hmm. which means that the price of your work is going to get pushed down and down and down. It's it's a it's a self defeating mm. it's a self defeating journey that humanity has put itself on, right? So that's the biggest problem that it needs to solve is that problem, mm -hmm. and that's you know what I'd like to see happen. I love that you're doing these kind of courses uh, to help people at least understand what they're dealing with rather than sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. Um, let's go into, like, if a person was <clears throat> watching our episode and would like to go deeper, Okay. what they can do, how they can, what do you do yeah. to help them to get deeper in this area? Yeah. So you can just tell them. So if I can just go back one step, yeah. right? So when I was with my father in uh, November, December, and I was opening the doors of, of ChatGPT, and every day I was showing my father, oh, look, it can do this. Look. And he was just like, yeah, 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 who cares, who cares? Then one day when I showed him how I did the business plan, he said, my God, right? Because he's done these yeah, things before. I he, said, he said, my God. And I'm showing him these different things. Then he said to me, Fahad, you have to teach people. And I was like, Dad, I don't want to teach people. Because this is like a secret weapon. Like, mm. you know, I, I, for me, I'm getting a, a, a huge advantage over other people. Mm. He said, no, you have to teach other people. He said, think about your brother, think about your sisters, think about your children and so on. And I ignored him at first because I've ignored my father my entire mm. life. Worst mistake, mm -hmm. worst mistake. Please tell your audience to listen to their fathers, <laughs> right? So when I got here and I saw that people, and I, you know, I think I told you the story, mm -hmm. right? And I saw that people here, this was in February, I saw that people were, they heard of what they said was, we heard about ChatGPT, but we still haven't started. I'm like, what do you mean? It's been three months. Mm -hmm. uh, why are you not using it? Are you crazy? So I gave these free seminars and they said, Fahid, you've blown our minds, but that's not enough. You actually have to show us how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I started that journey and I put together two core projects. One is called Bellamy Alden, mm -hmm. which is focused at the corporate world. Corporate world, I don't like the corporate world. Mm -hmm. So to be frank with you, I'm hiring people to take that off of my shoulders. What I love are the individuals, the professionals and the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And for them, I, I put together this, what used to be a two day in-person workshop called the Chat GPT Accelerator. Mm -hmm. And by demand from people all around the world saying, please, when are you gonna go online? When are you going online? I have now pushed it online. Perfect. So there's a cohort now, the enrollment has closed. Mm -hmm. So that's out of the window, but the enrollment for next month's cohort is open and everybody can join the waiting list by going to the Chat GPT Accelerator dot com perfect uh how frequently do you do it monthly monthly yeah so the chat gbt accelerator dot com yeah exactly guys jump on it trust me it is needed yeah <clears throat> let's move things down i want you to share a talent or a skill that nobody knows about you that nobody knows about yeah. me oh, that you wow. keep it. secret yeah um, as the secrets <laughs> <laughs> oh wow okay so um so i like to do a lot of things especially now because i have a lot more free mm -hmm. time than i've ever had in my life uh so can you stress on this you really after becoming a master of chat gpt in general you really gained your time yeah in a huge way 
in a really, really huge way. Because before, I don't know if you're very, are you a workaholic? Yes, All extremely. Right. So what happens is you get to the nighttime and you feel, you know what, I didn't get enough work done today. And then you stay awake working. Now for me, it's reverse. Now I finish working. I'm like, you know what, I'm done. That was such an intensive session. I just made an entire sales page. I'm done. That sales page would have taken me, you know, two weeks. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. In the ChatGPT Accelerator, we finish the sales page and then we get to the section on the FAQs. And we start writing the FAQs. And I think, what the hell am I doing? Stop, 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 stop. So we go and we find out what's the best practices for the FAQs. The best practices for FAQs is use it to address people's objections. Cool. So gave it all of the sales content mm -hmm. and said, listen, this is my target market. This is the persona. Give me the list of the objections that are likely to come up by people who are consuming this sales page. Oof. And it gave me the list. I said, okay, now give me the responses. In one hour, I had made the entire FAQ section of all the most common objections to come up and the responses Based to them. Based on your thing. Based on my thing. Now, if I had tried to do that myself in the old era, mm -hmm. it would have taken days, True. at least days. True. You know what I like, uh, Fahad? Like, because people use ChatGPT in an, in an inverse way. Mm -hmm. Like, give me the FOQs right away. Yeah, exactly. But you feed it first with your business, with your or whatever it is. So it gives you the response related to you. This is why I said to you, the, the tip of the iceberg is the output. Mm -hmm. The iceberg itself is the thinking that comes before it. So you have to think with ChatGPT and you have to get it to think first, just like you would as a human being. And then once that thinking has taken place, now give me the output. Mm -hmm. I love that. What will be the last message you want to leave our audience with without, I, I have a standard question that I close with. Okay. What is the last message you want to leave the people with? The last message is, wow, that's a, <laughs> we are entering, and this is going to be very heavy. All right. What I'm about to say is very heavy. The windows of opportunity for us as human beings are going to start closing because AI is going to start, the, the, the rise of AI is also the closing of opportunities for human beings. And what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, now you want to open a business. Opening a business previously, okay, let me go and make a translation business. You can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. AI is already translating. Right. Okay. Let me go and do a marketing business. No, AI is doing it. Okay. Let me go. And, no, AI is already doing it. So all of these things that we could have done, actually AI is going to be doing. So we have a window of opportunity. We're not there yet. So there's a window of opportunity before we get there. So focus, dial down. I don't know whether your, the, your viewers are business owners, right? Mm. Dial down. If you own a business, dial down on that business, right? So figure out what's your brand strategy, figure out who your customer is, what your niche is, all those things that everybody has been talking about for the last 10, 20 years, stop wasting your time and get it right, right now with the help of ChatGPT. And if you are as an employee, start figuring out how to do your work with AI. Don't sit there waiting for the day that, that comes from above mm -hmm. that, okay, guys, you need to take AI seriously. No, start from now, because when that comes from above, you will be the champion of your company True. and they will love you and they will be using you to coach people, to train people as an example for other people and so on and so on. And don't think that, oh, if I start using AI and I get my work done 10 times faster, that they're going to like kick me out or they're going to, you know, no, they're going to love you. And they're going to want you to be able to replicate this for everybody True. else. So for all the alphas out there, take this message serious. AI is really closing in. And I loved how you say it. The windows of opportunities are closing. So you need to get yourself moving. You need to get yourself developed in AI, chat GPT. We all will be sharing in the uh, description, the link for the course. I would really highly recommend that people go and do the course. You will thank us in years to come. We have a ritual before we close. Okay. The ritual says as follows. We have what we call the Alpha Talks Memoir. So the Alpha Talks Memoir okay. has, you have three things to write. The first one is your experience in the Alpha Talks uh, okay. podcast. And mm. you can share it with the audience now. All right. And the second thing is 
who do you recommend as as the next alpha guest that comes mm -hmm. and that's a way how we make the, our alpha guests communicate to each other though they don't know mm. and the third one is what will be the question for the next alpha guest mm. so you have two things you need to answer me now All the right. first is your experience Okay. How do you see your experience in the Alpha Talks podcast? My experience in the Alpha Talk podcast is like I'm home. I feel I like I feel like I'm at home. I feel like I've known you for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Same here. And you're my brother. Same here. And this is home. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> I love that. And let me read to you the question from the last Alpha guest. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, that's a tough one, but I have to share it. Okay. Who was the last person whom you treated unfairly and you still feel guilty of doing it? Um. Don't tell me ChatGPT you treated unfairly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You know, the, the truth is I do my best to be very fair. Even those people that I've had to treat harshly, I've also done my best to be fair with them. And so the honest truth is that I don't feel guilty with anybody. And from the outside, it might look like it was unfair, but if you go and ask that person themselves, they will say, no, he really was very fair. Mm -hmm. So that's my honest answer to that. I, I, don't have, I don't have anybody that I feel guilty of the way that I treated them. On the contrary, I have made a, uh, I've made a very strong effort. Even today, I had to lay somebody off and if you were to go and ask her, she would say, yeah, he treated me very fairly. I love that. But thank you very much for having you today in the Alpha Talks podcast. I believe you added a lot of knowledge and value to the audience thank uh, you. watching us. That wraps another inspiring episode of today's show. I hope that this episode has ignited your inner alpha and left you feeling inspired, motivated, and ready to conquer any challenge that comes your way. Remember, alphas aren't born, they're made. It isn't about dominating others. It's about embracing your authenticity, leading with integrity, and making a positive impact on the world. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to the Alpha Talks on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review and share the podcast with your fellow alphas. Also connect with us on social media at Safer Hakim. Share your thoughts, insight, and stories of personal and business growth with us. Let's create a movement of alphas supporting one another. The world needs more alphas like you exactly. Until next time, stay bold, stay driven, and stay alpha.